This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash ev9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Join me, 48 Hours correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Aaron Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. You would think Death Star Studios would have better internet. I think it's the machine, actually. I got a new MacBook. It's, it's already in, but to, as of tomorrow, it'll be operational. And I think that's going to clear up a lot of the issues. This is interesting. He quits his job, and all of a sudden, he's got all this money for new equipment. Huh? I don't know if I told you boys this, but the Apple Card, 0% installments. Oh, yeah. How about that? Yeah. Like, I was like, what? I got a watch? I got- 3% cash back. <laughs> and you get 3% cash back. Oh, you bought that laptop on layaway. Except I have it now. I don't have to wait. That's racist. Is layaway racist? Reverse racism. Your picks have been horrible, man. It's the point. It's the point of the show. Isn't, Isn't it? it? Isn't it? it? It's Isn't possible. It? I don't understand what this podcast is about. Poppycock. It's a fuck house. Yeah, on a weekly basis, we are consuming more concentrated bad movies than probably anybody in the history of mankind. Poppycock. What story? <laughs> what story? <laughs> what are you talking about? Do you want lunch? I have yet to laugh in this movie. I'll just tell you that. You picked it, motherfucker. So. <laughs> <laughs> just remember that. You know the problem with Hollywood is they make shit unbelievable, unremarkable shit. So I was legitimately offended. You were offended. I was, a, I was offended. I didn't know you could get offended. I was offended. This did it. If I were gay, I wouldn't be offended. <laughs> They're fucking making shit up, I mean. Inconsequential detail after inconsequential yeah. detail after inconsequential detail. Please don't lie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm there holding a mic in my hands and now I'm talking yeah. all over. Okay. <laughs> Cinephobe, the podcast where we break down the movies you're afraid to admit you love. I'm Zach Harper. That's Amin Al Hassan. That's Anthony Mays. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings. So you can support us on other levels. You get part of the Discord chat where you can chat us up. What else do you got? Man, we got we got extra content, right? Yeah. The Golden Dumpsters. Yeah. Cinefeud, which is going to become a regular thing, I think. Yeah. Cinefeud is great, man. We also got the holiday ones, right? We got a little Christmas. Ooh, holiday. Halloween. Jason X. <laughs> Jason, Jason X. X. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not forget the live shows, which we've been doing via Zoom. During the pandemic, definitely you want to be a Patreon. So patreon.com slash count the dings. If you have a submission for Cinephobe. Submit it. <laughs> submit it. I think that every every single time he says, do you have a submission? In my mind, he says, submit it. <laughs> it's got to be 40% or lower on Rotten Tomatoes for the audience or the critics score. As you know, January is Nick Cage month as we're doing themed months this year in 2021. January is Nick Cage month. We did jujitsu. We did Snake Eyes, and now we've done, this week on Cinephobe, the 1995 crime drama thriller, Kiss of Death. Happy birthday to Nick Cage, which was Mm. January 7th, and also, spoiling a little trivia here, but happy birthday to his co-star, David Caruso, also January 7th. Wow, same birthday? Birthday twins. That's odd. Keep the number seven in mind, guys. It comes up pretty soon in my notes. Well, there's a probably meaningless tease there, but there we go. All right. Kiss of Death stars Nick Cage. Cage was coming off of Guarding Tess, 
It Could Happen to You and Trapped in Paradise in 1994. Y'all remember It Could Happen to You? Yo, I love that movie. Rosie Perez in it. She's fantastic. All I remember is like him, like the poster was him in his little cop uniform and a chick and they're about to kiss, but they don't actually kiss. It's like, It Could Happen to You. Was that Jodie Foster? Was it Jodie Foster? Wasn't it? Welcome to Cinephobe. Call him Nickel Cage because he acted the ass right out of his name in this one. <laughs> he did. He really did. He had Kiss of Death and then his Academy Award winning performance, Leaving Las Vegas, happened in 1995. And then The Rock in 1996. It was just really the decade of Cage. Decade. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Cody. <laughs> <laughs> we also get repeat offender David Caruso. Oh, yeah. He's very Caruso in this. Oh, my God. I got to note, late in the movie, this is the worst actor we've ever had. Oh. oh he's, I mean, oh. he's awful. He's awful. But he was coming off of NYPD Blue in 1994, and 95 was also the year that he was in Jade, a previous cinephobe. We talked about it before, but he left NYPD Blue for these movies. Jesus Christ. And it effectively murdered his movie career, and then he was... Left for dead until he washed ashore in CSI Miami. Unbelievable. Imagine, like, you're saying, like, fuck you, TV. I'm about to be a movie star. And you shoot two movies and both of them <sighs> cinephobe eligible. They're both just flops. Oh, my God. Is this the first appearance on cinephobe for Samuel L. Jackson? Yes. It is. And you know what? What's funny? I had a conversation with a friend of mine who is, she's an avid listener, and she's the one that gave me the first feedback she ever gave me was, why did you guys try watching good movies? <laughs> I said, <laughs> honey, it doesn't work like that. I mansplained <laughs> Cinepope to her. Wow. And then she said, why don't you do any Samuel L. Jackson movies? And I said, he doesn't make any bad movies. And you want to know something funny? This is after the Cats episode. She sends me a text. It was just like a movie poster. And she said, he's in this one. And you know what movie it was? What's up? Guess. Pulp Fiction. No. Deep Blue Sea. No. Why don't you just tell me? <laughs> just tell me the movie you want to see. Welcome to Cinefeud, <laughs> the game show where we can't answer questions. <laughs> I really thought you guys were going to, we're going to, I thought you would guess this one. But no, it wasn't this movie. It was a movie called Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Doubt? I don't think I remember that. Dominic Cooper, Samuel L. Jackson, Gloria Rubin. I don't know who either of those people are other than Samuel L. Jackson. Sounds like a two to America situation here. He was busy in 1994. He had seven movies that year. Seven come out, including Pulp Fiction and two TV movies. Boy, Pulp Fiction. Keep that in mind as well. This is a Pulp Fiction reunion, ladies and gentlemen. And it's right before Die Hard with a Vengeance. He had Losing Isaiah, Kiss of Death, and Die Hard with a Vengeance in 1995. And then Hard Eight, Great White Hype, mm -hmm. A Time to Kill, mm. and Long Kiss Goodnight in Fuck. 1996. Decade of the 90s, Belong the Cage? Fuck you, Belong to Nick. Let me try it again. <laughs> The 90s belong to Nick Cage. I submit to you, the 90s belong to Samuel L. Jackson. We also get Academy Award winning Helen Hunt from Twister. Right between Mad About You and Twister. Don't forget we've got uh, Catherine Irby, Irby from What About Bob? And D2, The Mighty Ducks. Yep. And then she ended up on Law and Order Criminal Intent. No, 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 no. She is Shirley Bellinger, the only woman on death row in Oz. That's what she is. That's what she'll be forever. Oh, we're back to Oz, the Oz universe. Yes. We also get Stanley Tucci from Jury Duty, Michael Rappaport from The Big Three. He's coming off Higher Learning and The Basketball Diaries. Higher Learning's a great movie. Kind of the decade of Michael Rappaport as well. Rappaport had himself a fucking 90s as well. He used to be a really good actor. You know what's funny? When I first saw the credits, like, fuck, we could have got Rappaport for this episode. Then I thought about, like, my new business environment like ah second thought never seems mind. unlikely never, now never <laughs> we mind also get, we also get ving rames from undisputed philip baker hall from bad words and anthony healed from accepted wow anthony healed from sounds of the lambs and eight millimeter as a creep and accepted in both of those who's anthony healed he's the lawyer i thought that was matthew modine no. Jesus Christ. Wrong decade. That wasn't Matthew Modine? That is <laughs> so offensive. <laughs> Tell me that I don't look like Matthew Modine. Maybe if it was fucking Looper. Kiss of Death is directed by Barbette Schroeder. 
That's a name. Who directed Single White Female and Murder by Numbers? Oh, I remember Murder by Numbers. This is a remake of the 1947 Kiss of Death. Elazar Lipsky gets story credit. Wrote the original Kiss of Death in 1947. 1947 screenplay credit goes to Ben Hecht, the writer of the original Scarface from 1932. Same for Charles Letterer, who wrote the original Ocean's Eleven. And Richard Price did this screenplay. You know Dick Price from Michael Jackson's Bad Video, Sea of Love, Night in the City, Clockers, Ransom, Shaft, and four episodes of The Wire. Yeah, he got tied up with David Simon and also worked on The Deuce. Oh, love And then he created The Night Of. Oh, I love that show. Which was pretty recent. And he also wrote The Color of Money, which is one of my favorite movies. Oh, love that movie. Fantastic. Yo, by the way, Paul Newman is an acting ass motherfucker, man. Oh, he's assless. He is an acting ass motherfucker, man. I like props to that old man. Is he alive? No. Then how does he keep making the salad dressing? He died in 08. His salad dressing will live forever. He died in 2008? Yeah. AD? Are you surprised he died that long ago or that died? <laughs> he's the, he died. What are you surprised about? I don't know. You having a stroke? What's up? <laughs> No, that's is it a connection or is it am I am I having a stroke? Hold on. <laughs> Synopsis for Kiss of Death. <laughs> a reformed convict goes undercover with the help of an angry detective to ensnare a psychotic mobster. He is not reformed. No. Spoiler alert, he's the villain in this movie. He is. We got one tagline for this. Oh. Little Junior Brown. He rules the streets. He owns the game. But he doesn't own all the players. No, fuck that. Little Junior Brown is a big character in this movie. Everyone is a big character. You guys notice that? Other than Caruso, every other fucking person is a big character. $40 million estimated budget grossed $14.9 million U.S. and worldwide. Unbelievable flop considering all these people that are in this movie and the writer and where they're all at in their career. It, it's really baffling to me. Yeah, it's crazy. Let's jump into this movie before listening to the rest of this podcast. You don't want spoilers. Kiss of Death is only available through, like, maybe Maze pirating it for you or if you have a VHS. This is not found anywhere. We couldn't even find a DVD. Which hurts my case <laughs> for trying to win this poll. <laughs> couldn't, yeah, there was nothing. I, like, couldn't find it anywhere. Did David Caruso take his salary from CSI Miami to bury this movie? I don't know, but when I when I had Siri on my Apple TV search Kiss of Death, I got Jada Kiss as a result without uh, no David Caruso. That's what I got. When I searched it, I actually died. Kiss of Death receives 68% from the critics on 38 reviews. Audience score, 37% on over 9,000 ratings. This is our second highest critic rating after Mom and Dad. All right, Amin, do you want the positive or the negative reviews? Well, Zach, you know I'm a glass half full of booze kind of guy, so give me the positives. Well, everybody's just thinking about the negative. Well, I think the glass is half full. Everybody thinks it's half empty. Richard Schickel of Time Magazine. Oh, Schickel. What's most effective about the new Kiss of Death is Tucci's marvelously slimy prosecutor. The way you say Tucci, it sounds like two chains. Tucci. If two chains was in this movie instead of Stanley Tucci, what would you think? I'd like it more. Racist. TV Guide. Classy film noir. What? As you would expect from a team including director Barbette Schroeder, writer Richard Price, and Nicolas Cage. What? Okay, right. I mean, so flustered that there's no name attached to the TV Guide review for him to make a pun on. There's no TV. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was trying, I was trying to think. Of, what uh, TV guy? Like, don't they know that I have a bit that I do for this? Todd McCarthy of Variety. Oh, he's looking for all the reds. You did that one last time. I did. What well, you gave me a Todd McCarthy last time. I was going to say, didn't he create Spawn? Then I remember that was Todd McFarlane. A crackling thriller that feels unusually attuned to its low-life characters. You're lying. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. No, I, I can't even do it justice. I've got to play this sounder to indicate how much this person who just wrote that bullshit-ass review is lying. And it goes a little something like filibuster. You're lying. Bob Bloom. That's production. Bob Bloom of Journal Courier, Lafayette, Indiana. An interesting noir-like crime drama propelled by Cage's eccentric performance. I'm, I'm not going to ask Zach because Zach's a fucking imbecile, but... Maze, you ever watch film noir? What? Yeah, I actually really loved it. This is not a noir. This is not a noir. Absolutely not a noir. Zach, this is above your head. Go back to fucking watching explosions and shit. 
you Michael Bay bitch. Wait, wait, why don't I watch film noir? Because you're fucking uh, a Philistine, that's why. Phyllis who? Keep reading your reviews. Peter Travers of Rolling Stone. I want to see how he traverses this review. Cage and Crusoe strikes sparks in this riveting piece of pulp fiction. Sparks? But it's that first kiss you'll remember. Whoa, that makes me sound like they kiss. It does. Well, there were times I thought... Wait, hold on. They're gonna fuck. <laughs> Didn't they? <laughs> Did they? Not on camera. Welcome to Cinefo. Janet Maslin of the New York Times. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I, need to, I need to drink a lot more. I'm not... I'm, my mind's not ready. Maslin. It's a sleek, muscular thriller played by a terrific ensemble cast. She just had a crush on Nick Cage. Keep it in your pants, Janet. Yo, you got guns. Also, wouldn't she have a crush on Caruso, whose shirt is off for about 30% of this movie? <laughs> Spoiler alert. Caffeinated Clint of Movie Hole. Mm. This dickhead. Nicholas Cage is a riot. Caruso, immersing. No! Only if he's drowning. <laughs> He's drowning and having to recite lines and show emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Turan of the Los Angeles Times. He's Turan to do his job. What? Uh, I'm warming up. I'm warming up. I'm going to go get a drink. I'll be right back. You can finally get some fucking work done now. Cage, one of the few American actors who gets more interesting from film to film, comes close to kidnapping the picture as Little Junior, a pumped up but asthmatic thug who, like King Kong, is a gorilla with a wistful air about him. There was something that I saw that described him as an asthmatic psychopath, and I just love both of those words together. <sighs> I mean, we'll talk about this, but the asthma angle is... You think that was him? I've never seen the original Kiss of Death, so I don't know if they had asthma back then. No, I don't think it's him. It seems like it's part of the script. Okay. We'll get into it much more. Don't worry. Right. <laughs> A lot of thoughts. <laughs> I love how Zach thinks like asthma is some- <laughs> an advent of like the 80s or something. I see what he's saying because it could have been Nick Cage getting on set and being like, I need to get in his head. Like, he's got asthma. Give me an inhaler. Let me work with it. No, I, I got that part. I'm telling you that Zach said... Did they have asthma back then? Did they have peanut allergies in the 40s? Yes, they did. Don't think they had those either. Oh, those kids just died. <laughs> exactly. Like, what happened? I don't know. 20th century, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Mid-20th century, bitch. You had a peanut allergy? You're just dead. <laughs> we didn't have no fucking EpiPens. <laughs> Joe Brown of the Washington Post. Caruso's acting is vivid, but amazingly quiet and internal, and it's fascinating to watch the kaleidoscopically conflicted emotions battle beneath his controlled surface. I so disagree. No, absolutely not. Joe Brown sounds like someone in witness protection, <laughs> but the moment he wrote that review, the mob would have found him immediately. It's like, there goes that <laughs> wordy motherfucker. He works for the Washington Post now. Joe Brown could be David Caruso's alias. Rob Gonzalez of eFilm Critic. Now that Woody Allen has abdicated the throne, Price is the soul of New York oh. screenwriter. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was like, what throne? Am- is he- <laughs> now that Woody Allen has abdicated the throne, Anthony Mays. <laughs> All right. And then final positive review. User Kevin D, five out of five stars. <laughs> Sheer, unadulterated, ownage. <laughs> <laughs> Swo, because we're into anagrams right so acronyms acronyms dude. acronyms fuck now you're the fucking philistine shit the only one with any culture and education in this podcast keep drinking all right negative reviews <laughs> at this point of time my thought on critics not liking stuff is then turn it off you fucking weirdo you have so <laughs> many options people who watch an entire project to hate on it man it is so weird to me steve crumb of the kansas city kansan <laughs> <laughs> do you guys know many kansans <laughs> and his name is crumb was... violent crime tale which crusoe hoped would make him a movie star it didn't. Oh, shit. Zing. Zing. There's a lot of these shitting on him. Oh, okay. Here we go. Good. To balance out the one that he wrote for himself. <laughs> uh, Joe uh, Brown. Alex Sandell of Juicy Cerebellum. Ooh, juicy. The real mystery is why Caruso left NYPD Blue. It's not a mystery. I mean, it is a mystery. He was doing great. No, it's a dumbass decision, but it's not a mystery. Well, he is now. 
Took him 15 years to figure that shit out. They offered him a fucking movie role. Michael Dakina of the movie report dot com. Dakina. Dakina. My Dakina. Michael Dakina. Atmospheric yet ultimately hollow exercise in tedium. Oh, hi, I'm Michael Dakina. I'm a nerd. Oh, me and Ethan Strauss go word for word on Scrabble. Wow. Ethan catching strays here. Robert Roten of Laramie Movie Scope. That's oh, what Woody he wrote. Roten. The real problem with this film is a so-so screenplay. The dialogue is lame and many scenes lack any real suspense. That's accurate. Price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> Barbara Schulgasser of San Francisco Examiner. Uh, I bet you will. What? Examine your Schulgasser. Schulgasser. I bet you will. If you've got three spare hours and a yen for good filmmaking, skip Kiss and rent the real thing, not the pale copy. Oh, fuck you. No. Okay, Tony Medley. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Antonina Medley. (laughs) Roger Ebert of Chicago Sun-Times. It shouldn't be disjointed and uncompelling, but it is. You know what? That's how you know he's the GOAT. He cut that shit down in like four fucking words. Not like fucking Tanya Medley over here. (laughs) <laughs> oh, we're at the three hour ah, 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 shut the fuck up mike clark of usa today i realize now as i listen to myself i come off as very misogynist on this podcast <laughs> oh my yeah. god yes oh my god i mean you kept referring to carla gugino as the as the wife bitch <laughs> the bitch wife oh, the bitch wife no i said she plays a bitch wife i didn't call her a bitch it's like, uh... <laughs> no, you're acting like a bitch. <laughs> I didn't that? call What's you a from? bitch. Oh, that's from Cobra Kai. Yeah. yeah. I didn't call <laughs> He's like, I, I, <laughs> yo, I totally got it. Like, no, no, no. I said you were bitching. I didn't call you a bitch. And then she hung up on him and he called her a bitch. <laughs> All right. Mike Clark of USA Today. If you savor movies about sleazy plea bargains and other lawyer hardballing, death has its moments. Otherwise, the latest from director Barbette Schroeder is only a movie of moments. Aren't they all? Just a, a few user reviews because this one was so heavily negated by the user reviews. That's right. how I got. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. User Dan P, two and a half out of five stars. Story slash screenplay, two and a half out of five. A crime drama that started strong but deteriorated badly toward the end. Really silly use of guns by good and bad guys had me rolling my eyes. Just silly. Duration slash tempo, two and a half out of five. Oh At one God. hour and 41 no, no, minutes, it's a no, shorter no, than average movie that felt long. Stop reading this person. Cast and crew, three out of five. Nicholas Cage was interesting in a role delivery that I haven't seen from him before. Samuel L. Jackson was good. David Crusoe was not. Summary, two and a half out of five. The story and cast were just okay, and the film felt long. A thumbs down. No, you know what felt long? That fucking review. Fuck you. Coward. You're splitting the difference on every single category. Give it a zero or a five on something, man. Yeah. Grow a pair. Chip S, two out of five stars. Can't stand David Caruso. Can't act. <laughs> What with the two for then? Super reviewer user Matthew A gave it one out of five stars. Utterly boring and stupid. Seriously, this film was going nowhere and was just dragging everything on. Crap and overused storyline. What a shame. There were a few good actors in here. And Nicolas Cage for once developed his character, as all his others are the same, unlike this time. Don't bother wasting two hours of your life on this crap unless you have absolutely nothing to do. A dude has not seen enough Cage movies. I love how this guy, uh, none of these people said don't waste your money because they know it's impossible to find anywhere. User Andre O, one out of five stars. Oh! Review will be written. Hold on. Andre, black or white, before you read this review. Maze, what do you think? How's it spelled? <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> that, hey, don't even answer it. No, 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 don't even answer it. Just read the review. We got the answer we needed. <laughs> <laughs> review will be written when and if rewatch probability zero. First viewing 10 9 1997. No, hey. Okay, that's a white guy. Definitely black then. <laughs> <laughs> User David L. One out of five stars. That's a definitely black because he didn't watch it again. <laughs> oh my God. I just spilled all over myself. <laughs> <laughs> so caruso's choices were stay with nypd blue the number one cop show at the time or star in mediocre movies that shouldn't be straight to dvd he made the right choice <laughs> uh, <laughs> user drew h two out of five stars nothing of note happens user kelly p one out of five stars this was the kiss of death and then user private you one out of five stars if you love this movie you probably love nicholas cage 
and Samuel Jackson. Also, if you love this movie, I hate you. <laughs> All right, Amin, as you clean yourself up, what's your first note? Oof, I said, oh, that's the seven train. Remember, I told you guys to keep the number seven in mind because it'll come back during the analysis part. That's the seven train running over on the tracks that those infamous red cars, which, by the way, got retired maybe in like 2011 or so. And I found out when they retired those cars, they had literally been in service since the 50s. They hadn't updated shit. And I was like, we were riding on there because I used to ride the seven train because my family lived in Flushing. And I'm like, I was riding the shittiest fucking subway in all of the subway system in New York. That's fucking bullshit. And then I saw the junkyard that it went over like, oh, that's the stop right before you get to Shea Stadium. That junkyard. I know where that is. And so I felt very much at home. And I, I felt very positive at this point about this movie. My first note, train movie. <laughs> Second note, not a train movie. Mm. But some kind of a junkyard with a bunch of beat up cars in the lot. We get credits. Oh, the credits. Credits in alphabetical, alphabetical order. order. And I wrote, why ever do that? Let the stars be stars. Then my next note, wait, it said in alphabetical order, did all of them in that order, and then ends with, and Nicolas Cage as Little Junior. That's a lie. No, that's called an agent. That's a motherfucker who got an agent. <laughs> you know, that when they get you a last, and you're like, and starring so-and-so, and so-and-so as blah, blah, blah. Just like jujitsu. If you ain't first, you're last. You know what I love about it is it's not just and so-and-so. It's and -and so-and-so as, and they'll tell you what character they're playing. It's like, just you don't even get this shit fucked up. Also, this is quite the cast. Also, Little Junior sounds a little redundant, if you ask me. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah, they reference that, sort of. Also, we talked about the cast and how good it was in the cast part of the show. (laughs) Fuck you, Maze. We're back to a shot of the seven train. We got three minutes of B-roll. Three minutes. Anytime like this, I'm just like welcoming the relief of not having to take notes and like chopping that off of the time of the length of the movie. We've got Catherine Herbe and we've got Helen Hunt feeding a child talking about Helen heading back to school. Hold on. Let me just say this right now. And I know this comes on the heels of me, my self discovery that I am perhaps a misogynist on this show. Perhaps. But the note was zero cheeks in this scene. I mean, good Lord. Just straight shoulder blades all the way down to calves. One straight line. What what was going on in the 90s? No squats. Nothing. No no leg lifts. Don't give me a hamstring. Something. It was just like a... I mean, like, they grabbed a plank of wood and said, I better not feel any resistance as I push this against your lower back. (laughs) It's got to be... (laughs) <laughs> it's <laughs> Maze, what, Maze, what do we do here i i don't i mean so did you discover you were a misogynist by listening to an old episode or from like taking the notes in this episode or are you from the future and you've heard this episode and now <laughs> you're like wow you know what? that would be an advanced hey. future callback i mean future callback baby the futurist of callbacks mm. also from the past though my, with my sentiments <laughs> zero cheeks in this scene it was the all all that that whole monologue right there not written all i got was in my in my phone and i knew the rest zero cheeks in this scene apparently this little girl saved their lives crusoe's the dad they've got a babysitter for tonight he went to some meeting at noon instead of the nighttime one and he says jimmy fucked up how much i owe she says to give a dollar and i wrote did this movie invent the fine bucket he's aggressively ginger a shockingly ginger. Yeah, he's real fire. Fiery. Fi- I mean, I I won't lie. I tried not to, but my mind did not allow me. His pubic hair situation must be just a disaster. Just like someone came with a red pen and said, no, no, and just scribbled all over it, right? He's got to look like like Gritty, right? Isn't Gritty that, that uh, hockey mascot? Oh, yeah. He's got, <laughs> it's just got to look like him down there. <laughs> Like he's got Gritty in a leg lock. (laughs) (laughs) He's trying to get Gritty to tap out. (laughs) He's got to give Helen a dollar. You think he has ass hair? She'll go to the meeting tonight. 
They're talking about Alcoholics Anonymous, by the way, which I didn't totally get at first. Oh, is that what it was? Uh, no. Oh, I didn't get the Okay. No chance. Yeah, they're both alcoholics, recovering alcoholics. When was that ever fucking divulged? This terrible scene. Jesus. How? Okay, go ahead. No, How? Go ahead. No, I don't How? know what. <laughs> no, hold on. How? Helen Hunt. Oh, my. I... <sighs> Guys, all right. If you're a listener, you're a new listener. I know we got a, no- a lot of new listeners from the Levitard Show. You gotta understand. God, if this is the first one you're listening to, they're, they've been better, I promise. Go listen to a different one. Stop right now and go pick go up. Go listen to last week, Snake Eyes. Showgirls or Swordfish. <laughs> oh, Showgirls, Swordfish, Battlefield Earth. Double Impact. The Fanatic. Yeah, like this is... Helen Hunt, what's the appeal? Why? Who's ever asking for more Helen Hunt? The 90s were. You know who had a great decade? Why? It was Helen Hunt. Yeah, Helen Hunt had a fuck of a decade in the 90s. Are you kidding me? Mad about you. Trash. <laughs> Twister. Trash. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you dare talk badly about Twister. I won't have it. As good as it gets, I mean. Trash. You won an Oscar for that? Is that what she won an Academy Award for? Yes. For her and fucking Jack Nicholson's non-acting ass? And if you haven't heard... Go back and listen to The Departed. Adnan Burke was a guest. Jack Nicholson hasn't acted since, like, The Shining. (laughs) He's been mailing it in for 50 fucking years. Joker was last time he acted. Uh, He's great as a Joker. I will not have it. All right. So apparently she's going to go to Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Now we cut to the kid pass out on him on the couch. Someone's knocking at the door. He gets up and leaves that child within a role of hitting their head on a coffee table so that he can answer the door. Like, that is not good parenting. Face down on the couch. Face down on the couch. Coffee table no more than eight inches away. This reminds me of when <laughs> my friend and his wife were pregnant, and he was talking about how he could just go out to, like, have lunch or something with someone and leave the baby at home. Because he has it on a security camera. What? And we were trying really hard to explain to him no. that it's a baby. And then it like literally could roll over and suffocate. <laughs> like at any moment. You can't just leave your baby on the couch. If you would indulge me. Just imagine you're at the funeral. It's a tiny little coffin. Everyone's kind of somber and tears is soft weeping. And... As people come by to give their respects, they look at Maze's friend with a glare in their eyes. And all he can muster off is, the 405 was backed up. I just figure he's looking at the punch card for from Jersey Mike's. It's like, I'm, I'm so close to a free sub. They won't mind if I dip out right <laughs> This kid's not gonna go. This kid's not gonna get any, any undead. This is the this is the the worst episode we've ever done. That's because you just did a five minute monologue on no cheeks, zero cheeks, not sir. The former NBA coach. <laughs> All right, it's Michael Rappaport at the door. Four minutes into this movie. Uh, he needs a driver for some job. Caruso's pissed that he's there. Uh, he can go back to jail just for talking to him. And then there's some real tension in how they're manhandling each other against these on, walls. Hold on. Hold on. First of all, his eyes have gotten so much smaller over the years. I didn't recognize him because his eyes were so wide open. I'm like, he sounds like Michael Rappaport, but who is this guy? Also... His hair has gotten so much fairer, and I'm not even talking about the top of his head. His eyebrows. His eyebrows were dark in the scene, and now they're, like, white. It's crazy. And then third, the way Caruso grabs him. Oh, it was terrible. I mean. No, I mean, not if you wanted to fuck. It wasn't threatening. Exactly. It was the least threatening grab I've ever seen in my life. Maze, that's how you choke someone when you want to have sex and they say, choke me, but you don't want to catch a charge. 
Yeah, but you're also like, I don't know what the line is here, right? Yep, yes, that's exactly. exactly what that is. <laughs> Neighbor yells down to Caruso. Rappaport is crossing so many boundaries here. And I wrote, is this kid okay? We haven't checked on the kid in a while. Sids. Ronnie, I don't want your fucking money. Get out of here. Rappaport is monologuing his ass off, though, about his family taking care of Caruso years ago. Then Rappaport gets on his knees begging him oh for two hours and he'll pay him double. And then Caruso puts his hand on the back of Rappaport's head like he was going to get a blowjob. While Rappaport is whispering in the most whispering. I mean, I'm talking about that shit is a juicy ass whisper. Please, please, please. And I will remind you, his child is feet away. Oh, you know what, man? Baby doesn't know what a blowjob looks like. What? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Please, to if you're out there, out of context, cinephobe, not that one. <laughs> Please, not that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Catherine comes down to babysit. He'll be back in two hours. He drives a Porsche to these semi trucks. He's got all the cars on them. The baby is still presumably face down on the couch, by the way. I'm telling you, Jim, man, since you went away, man, we got big, man. No more smash and grab bullshit. Man. You know, I got a half size difference in my shoes and always got to put three insoles on the left. So if it's like the right... Now when I see some shoes I want, I buy two pairs, 10 and a half and 11. I'm talking like three, four hundred dollars. I don't give a fuck about your shoes. Get me home in two hours. Nick Cage has guns. No sleeves. My shit was just holy shit, Nick Cage. Cage grabs Rappaport by the throat and then Caruso grabs his arm again with some Mm. sexual tension. Tension. Remove your fucking hand. And he is panting heavily already acting his ass off acting his ass off breathing his ass off speaking of zero cheeks cage no cheeks in this movie let me just say right now when he said remove your hand it was panting heavily i didn't realize it was asthma i thought it was just one of those things like (laughs) when you're in the middle of it and she does something and you're like stop but (laughs) you know that stop is not real (laughs) that means keep going Yes means no. We find out Little Junior has asthma, and then Nick Cage throws a drunk guy out of the semi-truck like he's eliminating him from the fucking Royal Rumble. (laughs) And my next note is file. (laughs) So this is the question I wrote. Better throw. Nick Cage throwing that guy with one stroke. Really grab the dude and throw him out that shit across the way to hit the other truck. I mean, that was a full-size human he threw. Like it was He threw that shit, or... Michael Richardson problem child taking it away <laughs> and throwing that shit. He fucking chucked it like it was a frisbee. A 50 pound weight. I'm going this though because it was so great because the, the truck bed is elevated. So really he just had to do one smooth motion. Man. I mean, that's still hard. Fuck no. Talk about a clean and jerk. Fuck. <laughs> that. <laughs> I was also staring at his all-white sleeveless outfit and basketball Yo, shoes that he's got he on. Is fitted out in this movie. First of all, he wore all white for the entire fucking movie, ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler alert. Second of all, though, I wanted like frame by frame of the different shoes he rocked because I have a feeling them shits would set the market on fire nowadays. Cage hands half the money to Crusoe. Am I drunk? And I wrote... I don't understand what his accent is doing or where it's going. What is this accent? Yeah, he doesn't want them to stagger the trucks. Stagger! Don't stagger! I was like, what the fuck is this accent? It's okay, because he he loses it for a little while, then it brings it back. Look like a circus train! I have a random note here. David Caruso pensive looks. I don't even remember. But I I, I trust myself. That's like the only thing he can do. (laughs) Hold on. You trust yourself. I mean, I trust my sober self. I don't trust myself right now. You have a note that says no cheeks. Zero. That delivers a (laughs) five minute monologue. And you have a note that says David Caruso pensive looks. It triggers nothing. No recollection. I don't really understand what happened here. Rappaport says that Caruso's problem is that he's a liberal. Yeah. So he's going to help the drunk guy. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> and take him with them. You know what your problem is? You're, You're a liberal. liberal. The drunk cage beat up is waking up in the trunk next to Caruso, realizes he has a head wound. Then a man outside a bar drinking a glass of wine notices the trucks driving by. Yeah. Because okay. they didn't stagger. A couple of things. <laughs> One is my man wakes up, realizes he has a head wound, and his first question is, Where's my money? Immediately. And Caruso says, Shut up. 
And then also, my man is drinking wine outside a bar. <laughs> And it's a dive bar, ladies and gentlemen. This ain't fucking yeah. Katsuya. Yeah, it was pre-corona, too. It's back when you could drink inside bars, which is just a weird choice by him to be outside. Drinking wine at the absolute divies of dive bars. They zoomed on in on him and focused on him for so long, I thought, this is going to come back later. Remember that guy. Never does. Not once does he come back, because I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, okay, I need to know who this guy is. It's to illustrate that they... We're being very obvious. They pull up to a cargo ship. The cops roll up on them. Sam Jackson's one of the cops. Samuel L. Jackson, I submit to you, never been bad in any role in his entire fucking life. Oh, agreed. I'm not saying he hasn't been in bad movies. No, but he's he kill, he kills it all. Deep Blue Sea? He was great in that, too. The fucking shark ate me. Shows him the badge, and then the drunk guy goes to shoot Sam. Crusoe puts his hand up in front of the gun. It shoots through his hand, hits Sam Jackson in the cheek, and then Crusoe dives out of the truck and the cops unload on the drunk with like five, five guns. So many cops. These cops didn't fire like cops. They fired like fucking mobsters. Everyone's gun was held sideways and very nonchalant. Like motherfucker. Blah, blah, blah. It wasn't no like two hands on the like service pistol. And all, none, none of that. Right. They start giving Caruso all this fucking shit. He saved his fucking life. If it weren't for Caruso, Samuel Jackson is shot in the face directly and his face explodes like a watermelon between the legs of those women that on Instagram that work out and try to show you their thigh strength and just crush it. You just see fucking watermelon meat fall out on the ground beneath him. God, I did it again, didn't I? That's the point category you look at? Jesus. All right, and all the shooting commotion right before it hits the cops that are near him, and he runs away. Crusoe gets knocked out by a cop, and he wakes up in a hospital next to Sam Jackson. In the ER, cop comes over, squeezes Crusoe's gunshot hand, and then Stanley Tucci rocks up, and he's the district attorney, he wants names of the other guys who escaped. Crusoe's getting charged with murder of a, for a shot cop. Who did he fucking, who got murdered? This is not how this works. This is not how any of this works. Who got murdered? I don't know. And he fucking saved fucking, I mean, like, nobody noticed that shit. He put his hand up while the other asshole had a gun. Well, they do come around with the next scene. Crusoe says that some guy offered him $1,500. Tucci says he's being charged for felony murder, to which my next note was, is there such thing as misdemeanor murder? There is. Manslaughter, right? Is there? It's called manslaughter, right? That's a misdemeanor? No, it's still a felony. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm drunk. Right. I'm drunk. You slap dicks? <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. You know how Ethan Strauss on his podcast has a, like a recurring segment, I'm not a doctor, but I'm not a lawyer, but. It's a misdemeanor if you kill Missy Elliott. Now Caruso is talking no, 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 to no. his lawyer. No, let us, let, us, let us sit a little longer. Uh, man, I can't stand the rain. Oh my god! <laughs> These mother. People are gonna talk about this one. You know those gossip folks. <laughs> I'm trying to remember a missing guy. <laughs> oh my god! You gotta stop drinking. Is your from a different than the anthem? I'm blanking on everything. What's the one with fucking <laughs> Russell Wilson's wife? That's how Russell much of a misogynist I am on this podcast. I can't remember her name. Holy shit. I mean, it's easy enough to remember. It's just a it's just a one two step decision process, you know? <laughs> Nothing more. I figured you'd lose control on this one. <laughs> Caruso talking to his lawyer in prison. The lawyer says they'll be happy to stick him. Matthew Modi. Stick with class two grand larceny. This guy's also like 30 years older than Matthew Modine, by the way. In this scene. Well, yeah, it's like Matthew Modine now in 1995. He's in this scene 30 years older than Matthew Modine. <laughs> I know. He's not that wrong, but he's off by... 25 years. Crusoe wants to know what happens to his family. Lawyer says they take care of their own. He's got his entire ass in this scene. Michael Rappaport gives Helen Hunt $150. Says it's coming every week out of his own pocket. He says, let's be realistic because it's not enough money for her. Says there's a way to get it up a little bit. Work for him at the garage. Run credit cards. Make appointments. As he licks his lips. He's real problematic in this one. She wants to know why Crusoe did it. He says he doesn't know. If it could be me instead of him, it would be. He uses that line a lot liar now she's visiting crusoe in prison he has the deadest most emotionless eyes i've ever seen just absolutely no emotions what is going on with the glass divider in this prison it's like i don't know a ping pong net level <laughs> it's not stopping anyone 
from touching anyone. He reaches over multiple times. No, because they touch each other often and they yell at him. Yeah. Why do they even have this divider? She's acting like she is 100% acting in this scene because he's not. She's got like runny eye makeup and everything. Like she's trying. He gives nothing (laughs) at the shop. Rappaport gives her a beer. She says she doesn't drink. Not anymore. And Rappaport remembers when she and uh, Caruso used to be partiers. See, there's your Alcoholics Anonymous exposition right there. I blanked Uh, out on this entire season. When they're in the visitation, he says, am I doing right by you? And she says, doing right by me? You're in jail, Jimmy. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great fucking point. Some guy tries to sell Rappaport a fully loaded Infinity or something. Yep. Kevin Corrigan, repeat offender, he was in The Departed. Rappaport is playing dumb with the guy. He asks him if he's a cop. He breaks a bottle over his head. These guys attack him. Helen is scared as he drives off. Rappaport is pissed and pulls her out of the shop. They go to a strip club. She is clasping that rolling rock like it is the elixir of life. How big of a debt is going to get paid off by her running credit cards? It's a great question. Nick Cage is bench pressing a stripper. Not a stripper. What is she? What? That's his girlfriend. Hope Davis. That doesn't mean she's not a stripper. She's wearing like a fucking lingerie shit at a strip club. I hope because of this hill that you've decided to to die on, I hope this episode takes you nine hours to edit. No, her name is Hope Davis, not Hope Hill. I, I like, saw what Zach, are we Zach, doing? Zach, I wanted to stay silent and sit, but I fucking laughed. It was funny. <laughs> I laughed. I found it droll. Maybe I'm drunk. I don't know. Jesus, what you been eating? Oh, come on, you f- There we go. Wow. <laughs> Maze, I can't have you putting yourself. Yeah, Maze, we have a much bigger audience it. now. We yeah, can't have you yeah, say we, these shits yeah. anymore. Ugh, pop! Pop! I'm going for 40. Watch! And then they show his dad. I said, oh, shit. That's Captain Deal from the Rush Hour movies. Dad's not impressed as Rappaport gives him a bag of money. Bing Rames is a bodyguard. Philip Baker Hall has... Is on oxygen in this movie, so breathing poorly runs in the family. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a real epidemic there. Rappaport wants to know what kind of car Helen Hunt likes to drive. He wants to give her a car. He's me too in the fuck out of her. Cage walks over in some kind of accent. My father says to take her home. My father takes to... <laughs> My father... <laughs> hold on, hold on. <clears throat> My father said to take her home. Now, bucko. Ha ha house. Ha ha house. Hey, what's the what? Oh. Also, does he have circles cut into the side of his tank top? I believe he does. And uh, I know you mentioned it, Zach, but I just want to point out Rappaport, Dirty Mac Hall of Fame. Big time. Big time. Next thing you know, she wakes up with her pants unbuttoned, calls the babysitter. She's coming home, she says. Rappaport is showering. She shoves him takes his car, recklessly backs out of the driveway, then gets hit by a truck. Oh, my God. Okay, so she doesn't even look. She just backs right into the street, and I'm like, okay, she's going to get hit when she's backing out. No. The first car swerves around, and then she starts driving on the wrong side of the road, and she drives straight into the semi-truck, and she goes, Jimmy! And my only question is, did she wake up from her nap drunker? Is this what happened to Amin during jujitsu? <laughs> it might be. My notice, mm-mm-mm, just like a woman. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. She's backing out and she's staring at her fucking steering wheel. <laughs> you want to turn around, honey? Or maybe check a mirror once in a while? She's been traumatized. By what? By waking up? I'm pretty sure she was just sexually assaulted. Yes. She was forced alcohol, and then she... Did he have sex with her? Her pants are unbuttoned to mean. She wasn't forced no alcohol, bro. They put the alcohol in front of her. She should have known better. She should have just got up and walked out and said, I'm taking a bus home. She's vulnerable. We're victim blaming. It's a relapse. Absolutely. She's the villain in this scene? Rappaport innocent. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Caruso gets called into the, the prison chaplain, closes the door, and we hear, oh, God, no. Oh, no. So is this because... Caruso blew the take of him grieving his wife's death. So they're just like, we'll shoot it from outside. Has to be. (laughs) Cut to her funeral. That's the note where I wrote, 
Oh shit, she died? Rappaport's consoling Caruso, saying he did everything he could for her. Caruso wants to know what she was doing in his car at 8 a.m. in the morning. He says he sent her from the shop to get something from his house. They were working to get his wallet. The worst liar ever. He says if it could be him in there, it would be. He wishes. Caruso's mother-in-law half-assed blames him for it. Caruso asked the babysitter what time she went to work that morning. She says she didn't make it home from the night before. So the babysitter is also Helen Hunt's sister, and the mom is Ann Mira. That's her sister? Mama Stiller herself. Wait, 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 wait. I thought it was just the babysitter from upstairs, because they asked her, like, oh, are your parents okay with you coming down or whatever? And then, like, I think this is the scene where I realized, oh, no, she's not just a babysitter. She's related. Yes. I never picked up on that until you guys said it right now. And it has a lot of questions going forward, which we will get to. Crusoe tries to bust loose to kick Rappaport's ass. He's diamond out Rappaport to Tucci in the next scene. Your wallet, Ronnie? Your wallet? Uh, He wants to visit his daughter upstate. Wants a one-day trip. I wrote very he got game vibes here. (laughs) Trying to get his daughter to sign with Big State. Stanley Tucci with hair, by the way. Yikes. Sort of, yeah. Because this movie does a very bad job of like, Telling us some time has passed, other than seeing that Karina all of a sudden. No, one time they do a great job, but go on. One time they do it. They do it one time. He's got a picture of George H.W. Bush behind him, and I'm like, this movie came out in 95. Why isn't Clinton the picture? Is this dude just like a staunch Republican? What's happening here? Oh, possibly. I mean, the guy calls him a liberal as an insult, so. Stanley Tucci's the one with the picture of fucking Bush. Oh, I see. I'm pretty sure that wasn't his choice, though. I mean, if Clinton's the president. I can't imagine Stanley Tucci rocked up to the set and said, all right, guys, I'm ready to do this scene as the district attorney, but I need, I need George Bush as the president. Because his name is Stanley Tucci. This is my very problematic Italian-American oh, league. God. Please come after us for this. Oh, I'm ready to do this scene, eh? Uh, oh, whoa, oh, 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 oh. Why is this Jamoke over here on my my dresser? Well, well, that's the president of the United States, Stanley. He's he's Bill Clinton. You gotta have him. You're a district attorney. Oh, 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 oh. He's not my president. You better get this Malignani Monde. <laughs> oh my God, yo, this is problematic even for me. Stop it, I mean. I love bipolar Amin. Great for podcasting. Caruso offers up people from a jewelry heist. Johnny A and Bobby B. Yeah, the guys at the auto body shop says to pick him up too so they don't know he's he's the one talking. He'll take his chances in a lineup. Tucci wants to know about the Navy Yard. Caruso doesn't give up Rappaport for the drivers of those cars. Tucci wants the name he's holding back. Caruso plays dumb to his lawyer about the jewelry heist then. In the next scene, wants to know if they picked up Rappaport too. My next note, holy shit, Crusoe's such a bad actor. Lawyer is talking to the mob boss now as Nick Cage jump ropes. But this is a great plan. I didn't see it at first, Mm. but it wasn't until the scene where it's like Matthew Modine asks him. Not Matthew Modine. What about the second second thing? And he's like, "Uh, Ronnie didn't say anything? And I was like, oh, shit. Uh, It's actually like a really good piece of writing. He set him the fuck up to look like a snitch, even though he was the one snitching. I really enjoyed that. I, th- I thought that was pretty good. They believe that Rappaport ratted, and he says, I clean up my own mess. This is when I realized that they're both named Junior? <laughs> Big Junior and Little Junior? Isn't that normally the third? Isn't that what you do? No, they, they, they can't count past two. Whoa, whoa, they. These people. What's more aggressive, the goatee or the chest hair? You on this podcast, that is the answer. The goatee. Ooh, I think it's the goatee. That chest hair is super aggressive, boys. I could have used more chest hair in the movie, though, but he's always got to be wearing these, like, white sweatsuits or whatever the fuck. Well, he had the scene where he had the jacket open, and and it's not a sweatsuit. It's like a windbreaker suit. Yeah. Very big in the 90s. 20th century, bitch. Yeah, absolutely. This is long before Nelly's double album, bitch. Nelly's double album was sweatsuit. Our shit was windbreakers, bitch. That shit, you want to win? We broke the fucking wind. We fucking swished when we watched. Get the fuck out of here. Dude, you heard that shit. You heard <laughs> us coming. Swish Yo, you, sweet. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> is that what it sounds like, Zach? No, I meant ejaculating. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he's wearing a white beat. Excuse me, a tank top. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Are you not this deep and you're going to correct that word? 21st century, ma'am. <laughs> Cage and Ving Rames show up, and Ving Rames is in the biggest jacket you've ever seen. How many buttons does this motherfucker have? Yeah, like he's getting drafted in 1998. 
How often are you having a conversation with friends, colleagues, whatever, and a subject comes up and you have to like look something up, a question really on the internet, and you're like, wow, this is really going to look bad in my browser history. It happens to me a lot, probably on a weekly basis, probably every time I'm preparing for this very podcast. I know most of you are probably thinking, why don't you just use incognito mode? Let me tell you something. Incognito mode is crap. It does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you've ever visited. Yeah, even that one. That's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter if you get your internet from Verizon, Comcast, AT&T. ISPs in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. ExpressVPN also keeps all your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the time, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button, tap, tap, and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV, so there's no excuse for you not to be using it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. Visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash dings, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash dings, expressvpn.com slash dings to learn more. Cage is wearing a tarp in the office now. Rapport says that it looked like Gordon's Fisherman. Cage plays House of Pain on a very nice Panasonic dual disc portable CD player. Yo, man, that thing had to be like two hundred dollars. Easy, absolutely. That that shit was very a very pricey boombox. Let me just tell you that. The time has come for everyone to clean up their own backyard. Clean up their own backyard. In this very scene, when he that? looks up in that boombox, I said. Mm. Holy shit, he looks exactly like Mike Ryan. And then I ask the question, does Mike like Nick Cage because they look alike? Uh, uh, this is a two American Mike, thing. Zach, Mike, Zach, you don't think he looks like Mike Ryan? The crazy eyes. Mike has crazy eyes? Mike can have crazy eyes. No, Mike has crazy eyes. He scares me. Like, I enjoy texting with Mike. I enjoy talking with Mike on the phone. I enjoy being on the Zoom. With Mike when he's far away from the camera. I can't talk to Mike in close quarters. He terrifies me. I've never met Mike in person. Really? Really? Oh, he's fucking terrifying. He's like Nicolas Cage. <laughs> it's like a crazy Nicolas Cage. Like a crazy Nicolas Cage? Like a crazy, crazy? That's not redundancy? Yeah, that's what he looks like. No, no, this is a two Americas thing. Okay, this is you being right. a racist. That's what this is. Billy, put it on the poll. Billy Gill, put it on the poll. Roy, please put it on the poll for us. Does Mike look like Nicolas Cage? And if so, second question does Mike like Nicholas Cage because they look alike? Jump around plays as Cage goes ballistic, beats the shit out of him. He's There's blood splattering everywhere. Cage's hair looks like Homer Simpson's after this. And he hurt his hand. He's got blood all over the boombox. They bag up Rappaport, put him in the trunk. House of pain? More like office of pain. Bing Rames <laughs> has in his contract, I'm convinced, he's got to have a cigar clause. This motherfucker's never made a movie where he didn't smoke a cigar. Crusoe's getting ready for that trip upstate as the uh, arresting cops show up. Sam Jackson has a cheek scar. For some reason, Crusoe's in his underwear. Oh, another reason. Sam Jackson looks 30 years older then than he does now, which I guess would make him look 60 years younger now than he did back then. Samuel Jackson looks the same age throughout time. Sam punches Caruso, and then Crusoe just calmly asks to see his daughter now. Why? Now they're upstate. He saved his fucking life. Cops, am I right? He saved your life. Why are you beating him up? Crusoe wants the cuffs off when he sees his daughter. They oblige. Babysitter is there updating him on the kid. Kid won't acknowledge him at all. Screams when he picks her up. He's trying to cry and say, don't take her away from him. But he's not succeeding in this acting. He says, I don't know what I'd do without you, Rosie. And I'm like, is he going to fuck his dead wife's sister? Wait for it. Because I took him at his word. Caruso's back in prison, literally watching a clock. And then it says three years later. <laughs> Filmmaking. 
<laughs> Three years later, babysitter takes the kid into the middle of a prison ward. It stinks. Kid says it smells like soup in there. Soup. Three more weeks and he's out. He'll have no job, no money. Soup. But he's got the kid. Wants to get her parents a gift, and she says that he has her as well. What do you mean I've got you? And I wrote, is she trying to get the shank? She wants the dick! So in Dead Presidents, Lorenz Tate also... Bucks his... Ends up with the younger sister of his previous wife. And is that just a thing in 1995 movies? Is this just like a major 20th century bitch moment? I mean, it's on Pornhub. In Lorenz Tate's case, I think the older sister ended up hooking up with someone else, right? And that's why he went with the younger one. In this case, I kind of blamed David Crusoe less. Like, the wife died. Died because she's a terrible driver. Jimmy! (laughs) She was assaulted, but okay. The sister was doing a better job of raising the child anyway. Caruso puts up an inefficient mid-range jumper in the prison yard. Maybe gets fouled. We don't know. Lefty turn around from the elbow. No foul. No foul. He had no contact. No, you have to let him land. He's getting bodied by that dude guarding him, though. Yeah, no, he got dry humped into submission. You got you got to let him land. Zach, this is the 20th century, bitch. We don't believe in landing spots. You had to just fucking do or die when you took jump shots. You know how you avoid doing that shit? Take it strong to the hole, motherfucker. Prison rules. 20th century, bitch. There's no chance Caruso's taking it strong to the hole. No chance. Crusoe gets sent to the chaplain. Same detectives are in there. Strong to Shirley Bellinger's hole. Tucci is in there. Saying he's up for parole next week. Little Junior is moving up in the world. Big Junior. That's one of those expressions like jumbo shrimp. Huh? Crusoe says he's not ratting them out. They can't make him do shit. They threaten him with another case. Tucci says he won't last long out there on his own. Crusoe says he'll offer up Junior Brown and wants to know if Tucci will cut him loose once and for all time. Is once and for all time a phrase? Once and for all time. And we're starting to get into the phrase section of this movie. He asks him, are you a man of honor? And I swear to God, with zero sarcasm or comedy, I jumped up and I said, he said it! He said it! And I'm like, oh no, wait, wrong movie. Caruso also says he'll kill Junior <laughs> if he has to, which I just don't believe. Fuck you guys, that was a good joke. Tucci says absolutely, and he's out. Time to go bang the babysitter, I said. They immediately go and get married! They get married immediately. Kid almost runs into a, a moving car on the street, and I wrote, she gets it from her mama? Exactly, Too so soon? just like... Breathing poorly runs in the junior family. Women in this family have zero vehicular awareness. I really expected Amin to make a generalized misogynistic joke there. I think he's making a drink <laughs> instead of a misogynistic joke. We got to get through I this am, podcast. I am, and I was yelling misogyny. <laughs> I literally like like Costanza running out of the bathroom saying, say Mandalay Industries. Like, I was yelling misogyny, misogyny. <laughs> Like, McCavity, misogyny, (laughs) misogyny. At the strip club, Cage is rage dancing with some metal plants. The grunting that he is doing is special. (laughs) 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 What the fuck is your problem, man? My father died! My father died! You gotta play the part where the guy says, the fuck is your problem? My father died! Yeah. He beats the shit out of that guy as he's screaming, his father's dead. I wrote, Rage Dance Exposition? I just really wish that I could go to a rave with Nicolas Cage now. <laughs> Sam Jackson shows Caruso a pick of Ving Rhames. He's Omar. He's buying drugs and guns. They're wiring up Caruso. Caruso's mad because this is supposed to be about Little Junior. Ah, the wire? Omar? What's happening, Richard Price? Caruso tries to boost a car and there's like a pit bull in there or something. I didn't really understand what's going on there. Lots of shirtless Caruso. Russo in this movie. Now they're at Baby Cakes, which is the name of the strip club. Baby Cakes. Goon shows Caruso to connect with the DMV for their car boosting. Caruso sees Little Junior and he IDs Caruso real quick, walks over to him and asks if he remembers him. Heard you lost your wife. I lost my father last week. What do you think is worse, losing a wife or losing a father? Caruso says it depends on the individual relationship. He goes, you know what an asthma attack feels like? Feels like you're trying to breathe air through a flattened straw. I feel like strip clubs in the 90s are trash, but maybe I'm just 
biased. His old man in the end had less than 5% of his lung capacity. He And then he went out hard. COVID? He is acting his ass off in this scene. If that happens to him, he'll kill himself, put a silver bullet, and then mimes the gunshot. He should be grateful that his wife went out real fast. Caruso introduces the phrase, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and Nick Cage has never heard of it. He's acting his ass off. He's never heard of it, but he likes it. He loves it. He's mouthing it back to him. It doesn't kill you makes you stronger you never heard this phrase interesting the customer gets too handsy with a stripper cage has him brought over tells him put a hand on the table junior you think that's an easy job dancing up there it's hard what they do are you kidding me don't you move that fucking hand when someone steps over the line difficult becomes the repulsively impossible i think you should have more respect for what they put up with so what can i do to make you remember and appreciate what that's like being up there next thing you know cage is making the handsy guy strip on stage what is happening i liked it also robert Kraft looks very eager to tip that guy the stripper guy kind of <laughs> gets into it then they just get rid of him and the stripper that got groped is not pleased with this and cage just smiles and winks at her i didn't understand what happened i wrote i could use a little exposition here this movie is light on exposition you know what that stripper's credited character is called uh, this is what you looked up yes molested stripper what <laughs> shit you not go look at the cast and crew you'll see a young lady who was credited for a molested stripper crusoe runs to the bathroom removes the wire drops it out the window then cage comes in pulls him out of a stall rips his shirt open looking for a wire Crusoe reminds him he just did three years for him. Cage calms down. They go for a ride. He's having a hard week. His dad died, you guys. He doesn't just calms down. He gives him a very sensual hug. He asks him if he knows what an acronym is. It's like letters of stamp for things, you know, like FBI, TGIF. You understand? Yeah. I have an acronym for myself. You know what it is? B A D B A D Balls Attitude Direction Love it. I wrote motherfucker what? I love it. Helps him visualize his goals, Zach. It says to give him one. So Caruso gives him his own acronym, F A B, fucked at birth, and he says no good. Too negative. Good point. He's a positive <laughs> dude. It's a good point. <laughs> you can tell that little junior has been to therapy, which is nice. Tells Caruso to get something out of the trunk. It's a bag with like a bunny in or something. Ving Rames pulls a gun on him. Cage says, Whoa. Oh my. Don't you be fucking sneaking up on me like that? Shit. Maybe you ought to lighten up on the yayo song. Do you think I'm paranoid? Ving asks Cage for titles of the car. Ving doesn't want the Red Explorer. Red is his bad luck color. You want to dance with me? Because I love to dance. Says Cruzo smells scared. Ving says no new faces. Cage takes a hit off his inhaler. They all walk away. Cage gives Crusoe the Red Explorer. Now Crusoe's updating Sam Jackson on the deal that went down. You see this eye here? runs all the time i can't make it stop i got a third of my hearing in this ear and when i want to go to the beach like take my kids to the beach and play with them and shit strong direct sun gives me a migraine so bad i cry like a baby they don't know why it just does so i asked for you and if you take that wire off one more time i'm personally gonna beat you to death Crusoe says it won't be a one-way beating next time. Ooh. Tension. These scenes at Mr. Wang's or whatever the Chinese restaurant is called, that's Sam Jackson's best acting in this movie. Babysitter says he can't get locked up again because she can't live with that. You gotta stop calling her the babysitter because it's his wife, at this <laughs> it's his point, wife now and it's the sister no. of his former wife. No. That is the babysitter. Uh, he tells her about wearing a wire. Cut to him talking about boosting cars and liking it. I wrote, why is she with him? 
said he felt good to be good at something. He had a flash ride. He had money. When Caruso is waxing nostalgic about how he likes to steal cars, he says, get it on the road in 90 seconds, which is, of course, the prequel to Gone in 60 Seconds. 90 wasn't enough, apparently. I haven't seen much of their relationship, but it's a lot of mentioning his dead wife in their conversations, and it's both of them. She says, I'm not Bev, and I was like, bitch, you came to me, and you threw that pussy at me. I didn't. I wasn't trying to fuck you before this shit. You like you got me, and you spread you your fucking leg. I mean, I'm saying you're not Bev, but you'll steal your sister's entire life, husband, apartment, which they somehow get back, which I think is just lazy. <laughs> they didn't want to get another set and kid. Took all of it. Weirdo. Caruso takes his shirt off again, just in case. Uh, he does. You needed that to happen. Sam wires him up again. Caruso torches an old BMW. Back to baby cakes. This movie's all over the place. Cage grabs the shoulder of Caruso, says, let's go. And I wrote, they're going to fuck. There's so much tension between these two. Takes him outside, says he doesn't know who the fuck to trust these days. Cage is scowling and not answering Caruso about what he did. Cage tells Caruso to walk over to the car with Bing Rames in it. Asks if he wants a red Rolls Royce. Come up on the passenger side. So he does. He walks up and then all of a sudden blood splatters all over Caruso. Cage has blown Bing Rames head off. Caruso says, what did you do? <laughs> I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, he's pretty odd. You watched it, motherfucker. Like, you know what he did. You're not Carla Gugino. You can see what's going on yeah. here. He plants coke in his pocket. So he goes, what did you do? What did you do? What the fuck did you do? And Cage says, what did I do? Fuck with the bulls. You get the horns. That's what I did. And I wrote, so he knows this expression. How has he heard this idiom, but not the other one? Did he go get a book of idioms <laughs> after the first one? He's like, I've never heard of this shit before. I'm going to use this all the time. And then Cage asked if he came up with a more positive acronym. Then says he hates the taste of metal in his mouth. He has to use plastic cutlery. I wrote, what the fuck is going on? He's never told anyone this before, and he's really opening up to David Caruso. When he said he <laughs> hates the taste of metal in his mouth, I was like, it's somewhat unpleasant, but I can survive it. I'm all right. Then he said, I can't even use regular cutlery. And I was like, wait a second. Do you guys ever taste the metal in a fork or a spoon when you use it? No. Tells him, fuck the cars. Just come by the bar. Once I have a life conversation. Kay just trying to bro down with Caruso. And I wrote, this is a movie about making new friends. Chris is at a payphone. Some guys grab him, shove him into a car. They drive him to some warehouse, drive up to a bunch of angry middle-aged guys yelling at each other. Stanley Tucci is there, says to keep his mouth shut. Bing was a federal agent, to which Caruso says, he was a what? <laughs> <laughs> like like Chris Griffin on The Family Guy. Like, yeah, and it sounds about it. What? A lot of dick swinging here. The feds want Caruso as their CI now. Tucci threatens the fed. Your investigation? It's called common courtesy. It's called professionalism, you arrogant prick. What a fucking waste of time. Just ask him if he's ever read about himself in the paper. Your balls shrivel up to the size of chickpeas. Now, Tucci wants prosecuted in state court. Feds say federal. Caruso honks the car horn, and then they listen to the wire sound of the killing of Ving Rhames. And this is the part where I point out this is a Pulp Fiction fucking reunion. Because the cops that come to arrest Cage for shooting Ving Rhames, who was in Pulp Fiction, and it wasn't Samuel Jackson who was in Pulp Fiction. It was my man Paul, and that's between y'all, from Pulp Fiction. Do you guys remember Paul, the bartender, when Nick Travolta walk in? And they start talking about shit, and he says, hey, my name's Paul, and that's between y'all. Yeah, Paul called around. His real name in real life is Paul. How about that? That's what Maze just said. Maze just said his real name. Is his real name Paul Calderon? Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> Cut to a beach motel. Crusoe, the babysitter, and the kid are stuck in the room. Fed's trying to convince his wife <laughs> so everything will be okay and that Cage will cop a plea. Lawyer meets with a bloody cage, wants to know if they're hiding him in Atlantic City. They're moving Crusoe to a new location. Now they're like in the fucking woods or something. Crusoe tries to parent with a teeter-totter with his kid. She's so sad. That is the saddest child in the world. I have to act with David Caruso. Sam brings his wife's final exams to Caruso. He's losing his mind. Then Cage lawyer says it was self-defense. He can produce witnesses that Ving has threatened him, taking cocaine. He's paranoid, pulled a gun on him. His life was in danger. Matthew Modine lawyered the fuck out of that scene. I was like, Not yo. Matthew Modine. I'm with him. Hope Davis shows up in a Mustang and distracts the agent so the kid disappears from the swing set. We get the classic empty swing swinging. It reminded me of the 
empty rocking chair in Troll 2. They're searching for the kid. Lawyers working these feds in front of the judge. If they don't. They were like, Karina, Karina. And then he's like, Karina, I gotta act in this one scene. Like, I actually fucking like you, Karina. Lawyers working the feds in front of the judge. If they don't produce the files that the lawyer wants, he's gonna dismiss the indictment. Now Crusoe and the feds are searching for this dumb kid. Crusoe's just going rogue. He's out of breath from walking as he finds her stuffed dog. Then he finds the kid with B-A-D, that acronym from uh, Nick Cage, (laughs) in giant attitude direction (laughs) on her forehead. I put balls attitude direction on your daughter's head, bitch. She chances she wants to be with mommy. (laughs) To which my question is, which mom? The babysitter or Helen Hunt? By the way, all that shit was really like fucking self indicting on some like child pornography shit because like you want balls and direction with an attitude i don't know i like i feel like you throw the book at those people for that oh see oh you think that it's balls and direction with an attitude i think that it's the balls have the attitude direction like the attitude is what's directing the balls i defer to you maze on this topic no the direction of the attitude goes towards the balls zach you fucked up the joke you just gotta let it sit because the motherfucker's a pedophile that's a joke. He's not Jesus a pedophile, Christ. but I should clarify for new listeners, he's not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, motherfucker, you gotta let it sit so you can clarify. 20th century, bitch. Fans tell Tucci their job. This is our worst episode we've done. It's the best episode ever. Fans tell Tucci they're dropping it. He's going to move forward. He doesn't care about the files or their task force. Everyone's corrupt and self-serving. Get it? And asks him what he wants. He says he wants a federal judgeship. Cage is out of prison now. Gives an amazing high five. He wants to find Caruso. <laughs> Kill Martin. <laughs> he says, live free or die, huh? So he's just rattling off more expressions, man. <laughs> everything, everything other than... What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> that one is never heard of. Also, Caruso leaves the, the kid with the grandma and puts a suitcase on the front porch. And I said, suitcases? When did they die? You remember the suitcase that you held in your hand and you carried like a dumbass before they figured out, let's just put wheels on this bitch and let you fucking drag that shit? When did suitcases die? Because now everyone's got a dragging one, right? 20th century, we carried our fucking luggage, all right? There you go. We carried our shit. Fucking bicep strength, bitch. 20th century, we made fun of the kids with the rolly backpacks. But now, 21st century, everybody's got a rolly backpack, bitch. Oh, I'm pulling my luggage behind me. Oh, my gosh. All right. He drives into the city, buys a gun. A million dollar gun. (laughs) That was a lot of money (laughs) for a little ass gun. No bullets in 1995. (laughs) Sam Jackson sneaks up on him. He asks for the gun. I don't know what Crusoe's doing with his acting here. He plays the victim card really hard here. His family is hanging on by a thread. Now they're getting a hot dog. They run into Tucci. Big hot dog car movie. Also, and he says, politics? What does that mean? And then he says, what does that mean? And earlier there's a scene where he flubbed a line. And here, did he just give two takes of the same line? Earlier there was a scene where he flubbed the line. He flubs the whole fucking movie, Maze. What are you talking about earlier there was a scene? He hasn't delivered one single line. There's a scene where he, like, says the beginning of the line and fucks it up and then starts over. And in this one, it just, he gives us two options. Look. I mean, what, what, why did, what, what, why are you here? Why are you here? What do you come to my house for? To tell me I got the shaft? To take my gun away from me? Hmm. Yeah. People come to me say, Jimmy, we need your help. Please help us. And I do. But whatever I do, I end up getting fucked. My family hanging by a thread. Can I ask a question? Oh, God. How do you guys eat your hot dogs? Because in the scene, Stanley Tucci went mustard only and i'm like that sounds like a terrible hot dog so given an unlimited array of topping i want to hear what either of you like to have on your hot dogs i'm gonna tell you and some people are gonna say like oh that's not how you eat a hot dog or whatever but i like ketchup and mustard i do i like a little bit of ketchup and i like i like a spicy mustard ketchup i i don't know how you have a hot dog that doesn't have ketchup on it that feels like Pre-rec. You're going to love this. People from Chicago will freak out about putting ketchup on a hot dog, which, by the way, I could give a fuck what people from Chicago think about food at this oh, point. You mean the people who eat pizza with a fork and knife? Those <laughs> fucking assholes? Get the fuck out of here. Mace, how do you eat a hot dog? I actually like ketchup and mustard, too. 
I'm with you guys. I like ketchup and mustard. But you know what I like on that too? I like some relish. And I like sauerkraut. And I like, you know what I like? I like onions. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you mean chopped onions? No, no, no. Not them chopped onion bullshit. I'm talking about in New York City, when you say onions, the onions come in this little fucking sauce. It's just hot. They fucking scoop it up out of this fucking bucket that's just been heated the whole time. And they lay it on top. And that's all the layers on it. And my cousin claims that this is called a home run hot dog. But never in my life, in all my years of being a New Yorker, have I ever gone to a hot dog stand and said, let me get a home run. And they knew what the fuck I was talking about. And so (laughs) this whole segment is designed as a specific fuck you to my cousin Amir from 126th Street in Harlem. There's no way Amir listens to this. Well, you know what? I'm sending in this episode, bitch. He thought Tucci was a man of honor. Caruso, worst actor. Ironically, he's about to be your honor. Good show, by the way. I like that show, Your Honor. Fuck that kid. Fuck that kid. Tucci complains to Caruso, and Caruso calls him judge. He mocks him about letting Cage walk to get the judgeship. Tucci says that he can do work as a federal judge, which is more important. Let's see what happens when I go to the papers, Your Honor. We've what? Fuck with the bull, you get the horns? Come on, what is he, a matador? Besides, the last I heard, that tape got hit by the garbage monster. Crusoe calls Sam Jackson, tells him to go to get to Baby Cakes in 20 minutes. Crusoe walks into traffic, almost gets hit. He jaywalks so... Oh, do his dead wife? Lackadaisically. It's called New York City, bitch. That's how we do that shit. He walks up on Cage at the bar, wants to know how he walked for killing a fed. He says, shit happens. Shit Did you tell the cops happens. how metal in my mouth makes me gag? I couldn't get plastic forks in jail. Had to eat everything with my fingers, and it made me think of that fuckhead yeah. from the riots. He wants his organic food. He wants his organic food. Oh, uh, that's what you thought of? Amazing, laborious breathing by Cage in this scene also. You know what I thought about? Yo, he's breathing his ass off. This is going to sound weird. I thought about... The can from Wet Hot American Summer. I don't ask me why. Okay. <laughs> I just thought about it. <laughs> Learning it could suck its own dick. <laughs> what made you think about the can? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How are we still recording this episode? I thought of a prison cafeteria. <laughs> and then I thought about cafeteria. And then I thought then about, you thought about sucking dick. <laughs> eh, I'm getting bored. Why don't we just skip to the end? All right, Sam Jackson's stuck in traffic. Apparently, he doesn't have a siren on his cop car. Cage says he'll see him real soon. Crusoe pulls out a gun in the most hilarious way possible. Awfully late. Why like an crouch? armed, Why like an crouch? armed. <laughs> An armed, inflatable, arm-flailing tube man. That's how he pulls out that gun. None of these guys also have a gun? None of them. Bunch of mobsters, not a gun. Nobody's got a gun. And also, why is he crouching? I don't know. The whole time, the gun is pointed at an angle upward, and he's crouching as if he's getting ready to take a shit in China. Cage wants to know if he wants to visit him or his wife and kid first. Crusoe wants to put the metal gun in his mouth. Cage chucks him across the room, by the way. He's fucking throwing people in this movie. Not talking about a couple queens and know a few grapples. <laughs> I'm talking about Polacks <laughs> who got no future. <laughs> no future. Punches him a bunch of times. Crusoe doesn't sell any of the punches. He threatens his kid. Can't breathe, though. And as he chokes Caruso, Crusoe breaks free, hits him with a bottle, threatens the dude with a bottle, gets the gun as Cage gets his inhaler. Cage tackles Caruso. Caruso's holding his gun full extension, like really up in people's faces. Defeating the whole purpose of having a gun. This is where I wrote Cage is the good guy in this movie. It's not Caruso. Sam walks up on Cage. Cage turns around and hits him, and he goes, now you did it. It's the worst acting I've ever seen Sam Jackson do. Sam helps up Caruso. Cage is arrested for assaulting an officer. Sam wants an explanation from Caruso. He was wired the whole time. Brings the tape to Tucci at the same hot dog stand. Tucci says he didn't specify his crimes in the tape. Caruso switches out with Tucci talking about being a great judge. And I wrote, did he just blackmail a federal judge? You can't do that. I love the idea that like tapes could be destroyed and shit like that. That's very much a 20th century bitch moment. Yes. There's one tape as opposed to now. I just email it to myself, and that's it. It lives forever. Crusoe says he won't testify, walks away as Tucci says, don't do this to me. I wrote, none of this will hold up in court, by the way. None of it. 
There's not a single court case where this any of this evidence would hold up. He gets in that stolen red Explorer, drives away with his family's belongings packed on top, and I wrote, that's the fucking end? What? Roll credits? That's it? Yeah, the stolen car going on vacation is a great capper. Crusoe was paid a million dollars for appearing in this film. Million dollar gun. David Crusoe was nominated for a Razzie Award for Worst New Star for his work in both this movie and Jade, but lost to Elizabeth Berkley for Showgirls. Wow. Wow. The club featured in this film, Baby Cakes, was actually a small business office building next to McDonald's in Queens, New York, that was completely converted to the look in the film by production designer Mel Bourne. It is now abandoned and remains unused to this day. In an interview, Nicolas Cage said he thought of Little Junior's personality as a quote-unquote big horrible baby sure i mean yeah i'm with it the empire state building in this film is lit up red white and blue this was for the new york rangers because at the time of filming they are in the stanley cup finals and they won it oh go new york go new york go you don't care well i mainly eat out of a dumpster (laughs) (laughs) i should try that i need some new dresses don't (laughs) or if you do stay away from the one in ocean and wilshire that's mine seriously out of it. Golden Dumpster nominees. Zach, you penciled in Nicolas Cage's goatee. And the next couple nominees are Nicolas Cage's All White Outfits, Nicolas Cage's Inhaler, The Drunk Driver Who Wants His Money Back and Then Shoots a Cop, <laughs> Helen Hunt Backing Out of a Driveway Without Looking and Then Driving Straight into Oncoming Truck for Her Death, Caruso in Prison Literally Watching a Clock Before Three Years Pass. Yeah. Cage not recognizing the phrase, whatever don't kill you makes you stronger, and then using several phrases for the rest of the movie. Cage's acronym for himself, bad, balls attitude direction. Cage gagging at the taste of metal and somehow keeping that to himself his whole life before telling David Caruso. And the guy who was forced to strip, getting vengeance on baby cakes, which he decided to still frequent. By kicking a gun to David Caruso in the climactic scene. Attaboy. I kind of want just Nick Cage everything. Yeah, I think this is the Nick Cage movie. Either that or it's not really from this movie, but I would also nominate Amin's misogyny. I'm going to nominate Robert Kraft very fast and eager to tip my man that had to strip very uh, embarrassingly. You want me to put Robert Kraft? (laughs) Yes, because I'm going to tell you right now, you guys don't know it, but go back and watch that scene. Look at the guy right at the stage who's holding up money and he's got a big smile and says, ah! and I get it. You're trying to like embarrass this dude and have a joke of it, but you also had a little bit too much fun. That dude looks exactly like Robert Kraft. Well, Zach and I are doing the right thing here during Nicolas Cage Munch and, and giving it to Nicolas Cage. But no. yes, you can give it to Robert Kraft, who's not in this sure. movie, by the way. Yes, he is. You don't want to give it to Matthew Modine, who's also not in this movie? <laughs> I mean, this dude looks nothing like Matthew Modine. Uh, oh, yes, he does. He look, Come on, Maze, Maze, back me up. He looks like Matthew Modine. He looks like Matthew Modine now. Which, like, you, I know you're, like, experimenting with all kinds of future callbacks. That's, uh, <laughs> that's I mean, says this Robert Kraft. Am I wrong? <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. You really want me to? You're wrong. <laughs> you're such no. a fucking racist. <laughs> That's not a good picture. That's not a good. That's not, that's that's a, not good. a good picture. It's his fucking face dead on. What do you mean that's oh, not a good picture? That's just all blurry. That's because it's fucking pirated from 1995. Because <laughs> you can't find this shit ass movie anywhere. This picture, Nick Cage's outfit is so glorious. By the way, that's why I included it. Yeah, it stole the scene right there. You can't even pay attention to fucking Robert Kraft. He's got the the shaded in gray roses on his white oh, <laughs> see-through oh, button-up dude. shirt that's tucked into his pants. Yo, he was white on white for the entire fucking movie. It's because he's the good guy. Every person in this movie who had a shirt tucked that bitch the fuck in. Oh, yeah, 20th century, bitch. You tuck shirts in there. Everyone was tucking shirts in except for me. I didn't. I never tucked my shirt in. I took all the heat for it back when it wasn't popular. So everyone right now who's walking around with your shirt out, untucked, 
fuck you. I started this gangster shit. Wait, you're taking credit for that? Absolutely. I fucking started that shit. When nobody else was doing that shit. We're like, oh, your shirt's untucked. I said, God, I fucking no, bitch. This is how I like that shit. Well, I picked it, motherfucker. And even though David Crusoe's awful, he's technically the main character. Even though... It's not really that great of a story. Nicolas Cage is tremendous. I was entertained. I don't know if I'd watch it again, but I'm going to file it. I mean, I retain the clarity to say that this movie bored me to no end. David Crusoe is awful. Nicolas Cage, dare I say it, I've never said this before. Don't you dare. Not enough Nicolas Cage. Not enough. We literally said it two weeks ago, but sure. Not enough any of the characters other than David. David Crusoe was in this shit. Front and center. And Samuel L. Jackson, Helen Hunt, Michael Rappaport, Nicolas Cage, Captain Deal from Rush Hour had like three lines in the goddamn movie. Henry Hill's little brother from Goodfellas. Bing Rames. He had two lines and he got shot in the head. I'm like, who the fuck <laughs> cast this movie to have all the great actors have three scenes apiece? Phobe. I mean, Caruso's fuck awful in this. The movie was the kiss of death for his career. Ah, ah, he, he said, said it. it. He, he said, said it. it. Someone had to say it. I watched NYPD Blue after Jimmy Smith's took over for him, but I don't. I guess I don't remember watching it before that. And so, like, there's no way he was so much better on there that they thought, oh, this guy could do a movie. Was that an hour long show? Like, someone put like two of these episodes together and said, yeah, throw them in movies. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I didn't think Tucci was all that good. Could have used more Hel- Yeah, I, I could have used more Ving Rhames, more Sam Jackson, more Helen Hunt, more Michael Rappaport. Like, the real actors, yeah. I could have used more Nick Cage. Even Shirley Bellinger. I'll take more of her. But Nick Cage is fits in this thing, man. His goatee, the guns. His dance sequence. The rage dance exposition. Talking about metal in his mouth and he's never told anyone that before explaining asthma not knowing what doesn't kill us makes us stronger but knowing every other idiom in the history of speech hold on not just explaining asthma but demonstrating (gasps) (gasps) this is what asthma's like throwing a drunk man out of a truck trailer yo like the fucking ultimate warrior eliminating somebody from the ring like that's what it was like the fucking michael richards (laughs) I gotta say, man, tie goes to Nick Cage here. I'm giving it a slight file, but it is a file. Next time we make love, you introduce me to Jade. Cinephobiacs. Yeah. Obviously, they're more than just three weeks in a month. What? Yeah, I know. What we're going to do is we're going to take your vote on what the pick should be. So, do you think Amin should pick next week? Do you think I should pick next week? Or do you think May should pick next week? And we're doing that based on what do you think is the best movie based on the ones we picked? We had Amin picking Jujitsu, the 2020 sci fi non jujitsu movie. In which they fight an alien who taught them jujitsu. What about the 1998 Snake Eyes with one of the greatest one shot in cinema history that also apparently wasn't a one shot? They lied about that. With Nick Cage as the sleazy Atlantic City cop who's battling Gary Sinise and Carly Gugino's nearsightedness. Do you think that was the best movie or do you think it was this movie, Kiss of Death, which Mays picked, in which David Caruso has all the asses in this movie as everyone else has no asses in this movie. But somehow we don't see them despite seeing his entire naked fleshy body. And so this is what you do. We're going to put the poll up on Twitter. If you vote jujitsu, that means Amin gets to pick the Nick Cage movie that we're going to do next week. If you vote for Snake Eyes, then I get to do the movie selection for next week in Nick Cage month. Or if you pick Kiss of Death, Maze gets to do the movie selection for the fourth week of Nick Cage month. And let me just clarify real quick. Please do not vote according to who you like the most out of the three of us. But please do vote if you feel like it, what you like the most out of these three episodes. I'm okay with you saying, well, I like 
for instance, this episode the most, so I'm voting for Maze. I'm not all right with you voting for Zach because you like Zach better than me and Maze. That's fucking bullshit. I would just say this. What's been your favorite movie of these three, and who do you trust next the most with a Nick Cage pick to round out the month of January? And if you pick Amin for jujitsu, it does not mean that Amin will black out again during the wild card pick. That might happen anyways. Also does not mean that Pablo's coming back. <laughs> So just want to clarify that. We will put that poll up when we release this. And then vote for Miz. (laughs) Nah, he's a terrorist. Fuck him. Yeah, no. He picks bad movies. Isn't that the point? (laughs) Is it? Isn't Isn't it? it? (laughs) Goodbye Goodbye from from Cinephobe. Cinephobe.